Welcome to the Prospect League Podcast, the podcast for the past, present, and future of the Prospect League, the home of elite college baseball players from across the country. Can you believe it? We're almost done with the first half here in the Prospect League. Welcome in to another edition of the Prospect League Podcast. I'm Lucas Burris, excited to be back for another episode of the Prospect League Podcast. As as I said, we're almost done with the first half of the season. Some teams have played 20 games, some teams are all the way up to 24, but no matter what, the first half of the Prospect League ends this Sunday, July 2nd, after the Final game concludes on July 2nd. We'll be done with the first half of the season, no matter how many games you played, and we will crown some first-half division champs. We'll host the first round of the Prospect League playoffs. Can you believe that we are here already? It doesn't seem like it, but we have a jam-packed episode of the Prospect League podcast coming your way. We're going to go over team stats, individual stats. We'll go over standings, as always. And we've got two exciting interviews for you this week. We're back with our armcare.com pitcher of the week and our baseball notes bulletproof hitter of the week as well. So two interviews this week with two exciting Prospect League players. We'll update you on all the happenings around the league as always. But first, let's dive into what we always do. Let's check in on those very important Prospect League standings. We'll start in the Eastern Conference with the Ohio River Valley Division as the Chillicothe Paints lead that division now 15-8 and eight on the season. They've won five straight games to pull out in that one. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10. The Aviators, though, are on their tails. They have the same amount of losses with 8 on the year, but the Aviators, two less wins. They have 13, so they're a game back of the Tillicoffee Paints in that division. The Johnstown Millrats were real close in that one as well, but they've dropped to 12-12 12 and 12 on the season. They've lost four straight games, and the Champion City Kings are in last, probably out of the race now. They're in the Ohio River Valley Division. They're 7-15 and 15 here in the first half, but they are 4-6 and six in their last 10, the same as the Johnstown Millrats. So that race really we're looking at the Aviators and the Paints and what's left for them on both of their schedules as we move forward with the last week of the first half here in the Prospect League. But right now it would be the Chillicothe Paints hosting that one game Ohio River Valley playoff uh, at the end of the season on to the East is the East is the East's Wabash River Division. As the Danville Dans win that game, they might be the hottest team in the Prospect League right now. They are winners of eight straight games from last place to first place in the Wabash River Division as they've catapulted themselves over the normal Corn Belters. The Dans are now 13-10. and 10. They are one game up on the normal Corn Belters, who are 11-10, and 10, but the Corn Belters are 3-7 and seven in their last 10 compared to 8-2 and two for these Danville Dans, who have won eight straight games. The Springfield Lucky Horseshoes still in this race as well. They're 11 and 12. They're four and six in their last 10. And Rex not out of it as well. They're nine and 11. So this is close. It's going to come down to who finishes strong in the Wabash River Division. But right now it's the Dan's, probably the hottest team in the Prospect League, winners of eight straight games. For the Western Conference, we move on to the Great River Division. It's pretty much been all Clinton Lumber Kings this season in the West, in the West Great River Division. The Lumber Kings are 13 and nine right now, winners of one straight game. They're only 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games, but the Quincy Gems are technically on their tail. They're 10-14, and 14, but they've lost two straight games, also 5-5. Five and five. Pistol Shrimp and the Bees are in it as well. The Pistol Shrimp, 9-14. and 14. They've won one straight game, 4-6 and six in their last 10. The Bees, 7-13, and 4-6 and six in their last 10, but this is the Lumber Kings division. They are one win away or one loss from Quincy or somebody else from clinching that division title. So it looks like the Lumber Kings will host that playoff game at the end of the season. And then in the Prairie Land Division, it's all the Cape Catfish. As much as we'd like to call this a race at this point, the Cape Catfish have ran away with it. They are 19-4 and four here in the first half. They've lost two straight games and are 7-3 and three in their last 10, but that 19-4 and four record is going to get them that first half Prairie Land Division crown. The Hoots are in second. They're now 11-9. and nine. And then the Thrillville Thrillbillies are 11-11. and 11. The Alton River Dragons are 9-14. and 14. And the Jackson Rockabillies are 8-14. and 14. So coming up, for some of those teams who had a tough start to the year in that Prairie Land division, but it's still all Cape Catfish. They're going to host that playoff game at the end of the season, and they're still chasing to see if they can pick up the most wins in a prospect league season. Now, their 19-4 and record is still up there, but, I mean, the Paints and the Aviators are still on their tails. The Dans have 13 wins. So do the Lumber Kings. So 19's a lot, but 
it can change very quickly in the prospect league. But Cape, still the darling of our first half and probably going to be Prairie Land Division champs if they aren't already. I'm not crunching the math in front of you, but I'm pretty positive they have clinched already. If not, they're pretty close. So they're going to grab that first half title. That is your prospect league standings. The teams you need to know, really the division races you need to watch right now. It's the Wabash River Division uh, and the Ohio River Valley Division that are still up for grabs right now in the prospect league. The other two pretty close to being concluded. I'm pretty positive positive the prairie land has been concluded already as well so those are your prospect league standings as we move into the last week of the first half of the season let's check in on some individual stats we're going to start on the pitching side of things before we head to our interview with this week's armcare.com pitcher of the week for team pitching leaders the cape catfish Still doing all the things that the Cape Catfish do well. They are leading the league in least amount of runs given up with 95 only this season. Rex sitting there in hits. They've only given up 166 hits this season. In walks, it's back to the Catfish, who have only given up 95 walks this season. Both of them, the only team in the league under 100 in those categories. For strikeouts, the Catfish have worked their way up there as well. Them, The Dans and the Catfish are tied at 208 for most amount of strikeouts for a team in the prospect league and an era the catfish lead the way at three five four for individual stats dylan peck for the cape catfish leading the way and wins he's now up to four he ran away from that what was a five-way tie with three wins in the league. He's the only man with four wins right now. And saves, that's Zach Zabrowski for the Aviators. He's got seven on the year. He is pacing the league by a wide margin in that category. In innings, though, we move on to the Pistol Shrimp and Sebastian Gonzalez. Sebastian Gonzalez with 28 and a third innings of work already this season. Gonzalez also leading the league in strikeouts with 43 and leading the league in strikeouts per nine with a 13-6 mark per nine innings of work. But earned run average, that's Graham Collin for the Aviators, a 0.00 ERA still for Collin and the Aviators this season. That takes us right to Graham Collin, who is our armcare.com week three pitcher of the week here in the Prospect League. He had a great start last week. He went one game of work, went seven innings, picked up the win with no runs, no hits, only one walk, and five strikeouts to keep his ERA perfect on the season. Let's head right to our interview with this week's armcare.com pitcher of the week with the Lafayette Aviators, Graham Collin. Graham Collin, welcome to the Prospect League podcast, the reigning armcare.com pitcher of the week here in the Prospect League. How you feeling? Excited to be here. You know, how have, uh, how's your time going? You know, how are you so excited to be here on the Prospect League podcast? Yeah, um, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, you know, it's been definitely one of the best outings I've ever had in my <laughs> career. Um, and I hope, uh, Hope I can continue that continue that success in the future. Yeah, the reason you're sitting with me here today is because you had one very good, very good outing last week as well. So you know that's sometimes all it takes here in the prospect league to grab a prospect league player of the week. But I mean, you really showed out last week and what you were able to do with the seven innings of work that you put out on the mound. I mean, no hits, no runs, only one walk in seven innings, and you struck out five. You know what was working uh, in that start for you? Uh, you know. Uh, I was talking to my pitching coach, Mike Makma, and we kind of discussed that um, we would go with a three-pitch mix, you know, fastball, change-up slider, kind of sticking with the fastball first time through the lineup just to keep hitters off balance, and then we'd mix it up later in the lineup, later every time through the rotation. Um, I had a lot of confidence on the mound, which has been key to my success. Just having a great mindset has been really helpful. Yeah, and you built up to that start as well. Your start before that was really good. I think you went five plus innings of work and had a really good outing as well. So, like, what has been working? Is it that three pitch mix, or you know, what has been building up to you know what could be a very very good summer for you off of three outings so far? Um, yeah, I think the the key thing for my success is just just confidence, and then also the defense behind me has been amazing. Um, like you said, I had five strikeouts that last in, um outing but I also gave up a lot of ground balls the defense really helped me out um they did a great job but uh yeah it's a mix between my mentality the defense the coaching the fans even I mean it's great to be there I love it yeah I mean you're playing uh you're pitching in front of a top three defense in the prospect league right now how much has that helped you just specifically in what you've been able to do have you thought you know maybe I need to put out pitch here but maybe I don't maybe I just need to put a ball at the knees and I'll, I'll let my defense go to work you know how has that helped your mindset on the mound no, 100%. Like, if I ever get behind in the count, I just say, all right, I'm going to, here it comes. I'm going to let my defense do the work. I'll give a couple hard hits every once in a while, but usually I get the outs anyway. I mean, Brennan Daniels, he ran down a couple hard hits in the outfield. 
he did a really good job. Uh, my shortstop, my third base, Mason, Alex, uh, they all did a great job. I love them. Yeah, and you mentioned that home crowd. You've only pitched in front of it so far, and that's a nice home crowd here in the Prospect League as well. How have the Aviators home crowd, you know, helped you, you know, feel good about your starts? How has it been pitching in front of uh, such some large crowd there at Loeb Stadium? I mean, yeah, it's definitely something I'm not used to. Obviously, coming from a small NAI school, um, I pitched opening night, and that was definitely nerve-wracking. But uh, after that, I kind of got settled into it, kind of got a feel for what it was going to be like, and uh, I got more comfortable on the mound. And, but it was very electric. Like, I love it. Like, it really fuels me up, and, it, and it's great to pitch in front of those guys. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to a few aviators already, and they talk about, you know, what they, you guys have been able to do in Lafayette so far this year. You know, how have the aviators set you up for success so far this year? You know, how have you enjoyed your time? playing for the aviators especially with you you're you're an indiana native so you're you're not too far away from home so how have the aviators kind of set you up to make sure you're successful on the field oh yeah like you said i mean i'm from indiana they take care of their players i think we have the nicest stadium in the league it's it's just it's something that i will always remember i mean the locker room the staff the coaching they just they they take care of us i i've never been in front of a, a better staff that like they, they, they do it. They do our laundry. They take the trash out. They do the little things, which matter to the players, which is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and going back to your success on the field, you know, this isn't new for you, though. Your spring was flat out amazing for what you were able to do at Huntington University. So how have you continued to build from that? You know, you threw 82 innings in the spring and now you're you're going hard for the aviators here. So one, how are you feeling? But two, how have you continued to just continue that success um, throughout the spring to the summer? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, arm care is a big deal for me. You know, I take my time warming up every day is specific to me. I mean, I went to PRP last summer, which uh, they really fine tuned my my arm health. And like, I'm able to do this like long outings, like going 100 plus innings this summer, total throughout the spring, because they've, um, they give me the tools I need to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then in terms of, you know, your success as well, you know, what are what's your future in terms of your mindset right now? You know, you're pitching your tail off in the spring, you're pitching your tail off in the summer. So what are those goals that you're looking at right now that you want to build upon um, for your next season coming up or what your future goals might be uh, in the baseball world? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a sophomore pitching like that, I think I had a great season. But uh, in the future, I mean, I always like to build off of that, see if I can do it even better. And uh for my future long term, I mean, everyone wants to play pro ball. That's obviously the dream. Get drafted, you know, why not? Yeah, you're setting yourself up for a little bit of success there as well after the, the spring and the summer you're having. So I hope it continues for you. But let's dive into some fun questions now, Graham. You know, you've answered you've answered the questions about yourself and about the team. You mentioned a little bit, you know, favorite stadium might be the home stadium. Now, you haven't traveled, you know, yet. You know, you're getting there. I heard a rumor you might be traveling tonight and, and pitching on the road for the first time this season. But you have yet to see all of the amazing stadiums in the prospect league. So I won't give you that generic question, but outside of Loeb, you know, what is your favorite experience at a stadium or what is a, a dream place that you would like to pitch at uh, in your career? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, well, right now we're at the pistol shrimp, uh, Illinois Valley, which I'm pitching tonight, but um, favorite stadium experience so far, I would say. <sighs> Clinton, Clinton, Iowa had a pretty nice stadium. They have a really nice stadium, and they brought a lot of entertaining things out in between innings. That was pretty yeah. cool. Nelson Corp does a good job. The Lumber Kings do a good job out there in Iowa. You're getting a little Iowa, Illinois action now as well. How about on the college side of things, or even like your field of dreams? You know, you're thinking major league stadiums, you're thinking college stadiums, you're thinking minor league stadiums. Anything that rings true to you? Maybe it's your old little league park. You know, what is your field of dreams that you want to pitch at once again in your career? Well. As a Chicago Cubs fan, Wrigley has always been <laughs> near and dear to me, and I love to pitch on their field. That look, I mean, the ivy on the wall, it looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a that's a common answer for our uh, Indiana and Illinois ball players out there of of what Wrigley can do for you. And then in terms of you know what you're looking at this year as well, you know what has been a big thing for your teammates this year. Is there any fun stuff that you guys have been able to do in the dugout or the clubhouse that you really want to? I don't want to take in too many trade secrets, but what is a fun thing that you guys have been able to do to continue the success? You guys have a great record this year. You've had a great first half. So you know what's some fun stuff going down in the Aviators clubhouse. 
Well, we do have this thing where it's not necessarily in the clubhouse, but on the bus where we play this game called Mafia, that's... which that's been a common answer throughout the yeah. team. But uh, we do that almost every time we ride the bus, no matter how long or short it is. And it's I think it's been helping our success. Yeah, I think if I surveyed the entire prospect league, I think 17 out of 17 buses are playing Mafia on the way to games. It's a it's a trade secret that's out there now. You know, everyone knows about it. It is through and through college baseball at this point. So I think you're you're one of many, but whatever helps your success, I think, I think is good for your end. So the last thing I have for you, Graham, is, you know, any big thank yous or anything that you want to say uh, as I elevate your platform a little bit here and give you an opportunity you know uh chris hall thanked his parents some people have some other thanks as well as we talk to the players of the week so you know what are your thankfulness or your excitement um for the rest of the season yeah i want to thank my parents my dad especially um pitching coach jamie sailors mike makma i want to thank god he's helped me a lot he's done great things for me uh, my family i'm staying here with my family over here in illinois valley um, they've been, everyone's been super supportive. My teammates, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better, better group of people. Yeah, absolutely. I hope your success continues the rest of this way. Graham, I want to thank you for joining me here on the Prospect League podcast. And hey, good luck tonight pitching on the road for the first time this season. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks again to Graham Collin for joining me on the Prospect League podcast, our reigning armcare.com pitcher of the week. Let's head into the batting side of things now in the Prospect League. Let's start on the team batting leaderboard for runs. That's the Cape Catfish still pace the league in both the pitching and hitting side of things. The Catfish have scored 202 runs this season in hits. It's also the Cape Catfish at 249. But in doubles, we move on to the Clinton Lumber Kings, 56 doubles this season. Triples, it's the Johnstown Mill Rats with 12 total. In home runs, that's the Chill Coffee Paints with 23 as a team. In walks and hit by pitches, we move on to the Springfield Lucky Horseshoes who have just found their way to find free passes this season. The Springfield Lucky Horseshoes have 150 walks this season and 54 hit by pitches to pace the league. In strikeouts, we move to the Danville Dans. They've only struck out 138 times this season as a team. And it steals the Dans there as well with 84 total in average and on base percentage. We move back to the Cape Catfish, who are hitting 327 on a team and getting on as a 438 clip on the bases. But slugging, we go back to the Chill Coffee Paints, who are slugging 478 as a team so far this season. On to the individual batting leaders. That goes to Chris Hall and the Cape Catfish as we start off with runs. He's got 34 runs on the season, but he's lost his hit crowd as Brody Chrisman for the Cape Catfish has taken that title. He has 38 hits on the season. In runs batted in, it's Artillo Dizla for the Paints, 41 on the year. In doubles, it's Borowski and, and Holy for the Clinton Lumber Kings, 11 for each of them this season. In triples, it's Vega and Kalamia for the Mill Rats, the Johnstown Mill Rats. Each of them have four this season. In home runs, it's Artillo Dizla. He's got seven this season so far. In walks, Tyler Shinyfelt for the Paints has 20 walks this season. Hit by pitches, that's Clark and Sprawling for the Cape Catfish. And then the Springfield Lucky Horseshoes, 11 each in hit by pitches this season. In steals, that's Slater Shield for Rex. He's got 21 so far this year. In batting average, we go back to Chris Hall in the Cape Catfish. He's batting 500 on the year. He's also got that on-base percentage. He's got 598 on-base percentage for Chris Hall. And slugging percentage, we're back to Brody Chrisman for the Cape Catfish, who is slugging 7. 756 so far this season almost halfway through the year 30 games in and some of these numbers are still flat out ridiculous but talking about flat out ridiculous let's look at our bulletproof or our baseball notes bulletproof hitter of the week that's max holy for the clinton lumber kings he has been just fantastic this year just talked about him leading the league in doubles with his teammate holy this past week batted 519 with 14 hits six doubles six runs scored six rbis and a one three four seven ops he was just really good for a lumber kings team that has still been good this season and should grab up a divisional crown at some point this week so let's head to our interview with our baseball notes bulletproof hitter of the week that's max holy for the clinton lumber kings max holy welcome to the prospect league podcast the reigning baseball notes bulletproof hitter of the week max how you doing 
I'm good. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Well, welcome to this Prospect League podcast. It's, you know, week three player of the week. We're, we're, we're diving in already. The first half's almost over. I think that's a little crazy already, but you guys are doing a lot of fun stuff down there in Clinton, or I should say up there. I, I think you're the highest that we yeah. have, but, uh, you know, it's been fun. You've had a great season. How have you been able to have such a, a good start to the season so far? Yeah, I mean, I I think just the coaches letting us play. I mean, we're playing loose out there, so just having a good time every day. So taking it one day at a time. Yeah, and and for you, you're doing a lot of exciting stuff. Mainly doubles. You seem to just yeah. have a knack for for hitting doubles. You know yeah. what has gone into your approach this season that has allowed you to one expand so much and have such a good range of the zone with really good average in the doubles. But you know, you know what has just gone into the general approach for you. I'm just. Thinking gap to gap, staying in the middle. Um, sometimes I get a little bit too big, take a little too big of a swing, but that's all right. The intent's there, but when I hit it, it's usually a double, so that's good. I was going to say, I think you you got two, so a few yeah. times this year the big swings have come in for you, but yeah. uh, mainly you, you found some some good swings in the gaps, like you said, but you're yeah. walking a good amount as well. You've got the RBIs and the run numbers up as well, so just a solid approach for you uh, in that Lumber King lineup. So, you know, what has gone well, I think, around you? Have the guys surrounding you in the lineup been a big key, or, you know, what has yeah. been your approach wherever you are in the lineup? Yeah, um, I got I have guys all around me that are getting on base too. I mean, the guy usually he's hitting three hole, Gavin Brzezowski, he rakes too. He's got I think he's got ten, maybe eleven doubles. You're he's tied in doubles now. Too. You're yeah, tied. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he hit a bomb yesterday too. It, it was opposite field, just a laser. It was a it was a bomb. But yeah, he's he's been really good. We have Trevor Burkhart, he gets on base all the time. And uh Will Stark usually is our leadoff guy. He gets on base a ton too. So yep. Yeah, you've got a lot of good hitters as well. So how, you know, how have you felt in a lineup that's just kind of loaded with hitters this season? You're up there in team ranks and you guys yeah. are really good. You know, how's it felt to, you know, settle in a lineup like that? Yeah, it's easy. I mean, there's no pressure. I mean, if I'm off one day, like this, the past few games I was over. So, I mean, but there's no problem there. Guys are getting on base. We're scoring. We're not the biggest lineup either. Like we got a lot of average size guys, but we know how to hit. So. A lot of singles, a lot of doubles, a lot of walks, getting on base. So, yeah. And you had a real nice season for Central Missouri this past spring as well, and you've kind of built it into your summer as well. How have you been able to kind of build off that nice year with your college team? Yeah, I think, I mean, it was a little less than I wanted, but, I mean, just keep building off that. Um, just looking forward to next year and having an even better year. Just keep getting better every year, so. Yeah, and you kind of inched into this this baseball notes hitter of the week as well. You're in the you're in the conversation the first few weeks in the conversation. Then yeah. week three, you finally grabbed it. So you know what were we able to put together last week that really where you felt like you were just setting the the world on fire at the plate. Yeah, I think I mean it's just a confidence thing. I'm mean, once you hit a few balls hard in the game, you just carry it over to the next and the next and the next. So yep, yeah, just confidence thing. I think. Yeah, and speaking of you know what you've done in the Lumber Kings as well. What have the Lumber Kings as an organization done for you to ensure that, you know, you've been set up for success and that you've been able to uh, play well on the field? Yeah, I mean, they're all the coaches are there for us. Like they're telling us any any day they're like, whatever you guys need, you let us know. We'll be there. We'll throw or hit ground balls to you. We'll feed you. We'll do whatever. So they're making sure we're ready every day. It's awesome. Yeah. And in terms of, you know, that clubhouse energy, how have the guys been this year in terms of the team? You know, what's the fun yeah. stuff going down in Clinton this year? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, we uh, it was like the second week of the year and we're like like half the guys like we've known each other for like a year, but we haven't. We've known each other for two weeks, but Clubhouse is gelling really good. We're all getting together on our off days and stuff like that. So it's good. Good. Uh, in terms of, you know, your goals of what you've been able to do, you know, you're working up from your season like we talked about from Central Missouri, you're you're yeah. hitting the cover off the ball this season, the prospect league, you know, everyone's got that end goal. Everyone's got that, that MLB, that pro player kind mm -hmm. of goal for you, but you know, what are those, you know, short-term to long-term goals for you as you continue to progress in the prospect league? Yeah. I mean, this next year, um, for central Missouri, I want to, I want to win. We, uh, we lost in the regional this year to Augustana and they ended up making the college world series. So, uh, I definitely want to get to a super regional and win that this year. That's my main goal, but yeah, after that, I mean, I don't have too many individual goals. I mean, just get getting better, taking it one day at a time, getting better every day to help the team win. So that's really yeah. it. 
I was going to say, do you find yourself as that kind of team oriented guy? You know, yeah. has that always been your mindset as you've gone across? And, you know, if so, like, how did you find yourself in that position to, you know, I think a lot of players are that team oriented guy, but yeah. you know, the way you talk, it's, it's not about me. It's about the team. So, you know, how did you develop that mindset for yourself? Yeah, I think um, I was a junior college guy. So I feel like there it's a little different. Like, it's kind of like you're trying to find your next school. You kind of have to somewhat think about you, like you still want to win, but you you still have to think about your stats and how you're doing and everything. But as central Missouri, it was kind of a culture change and it's just all about what you can do every day to help your team win. So I think the coaches there and everything, the culture there has just really instilled that in me. So, yep. All right. One more lumber King question for you before I ask some fun stuff for you. So, you know, some teams have some special things. I don't want to get any trade secrets, but are is there any fun stuff going down the Lumber Kings clubhouse that that is relevant for this conversation on the Prospect League podcast? Anything fun you guys are doing? Yeah, there's a lot of ping pong going on. We have some competitive ping pong in the clubhouse, so that's that's probably the main fun thing. So how how are we? How are you in the rankings? You know, are we are we up there in the ping pong world? Yeah, I could beat anybody. I could beat anybody. <laughs> that's that's a Absolutely. challenge to every every that's Lumber true. King out there. Is yeah, there yeah. tournaments going on? Have you won any of them? Like, where, how no, deep are we into ping pong? There's usually not too many tournaments, but it's just whoever's up, whoever's got a break and wants to play. So, yeah, absolutely. No, that's a good Everyone has a way to stay loose. Lumber Kings are yeah. playing ping pong. That's a good yeah. thing. But, you know, let's dive into a little more fun questions as well. So, you've traveled around a little bit with the Lumber Kings so far this season. So, yeah. I'll ask you the question outside of Nelson Court Field, which well, let me tell you, a lot of other players are going to say is their favorite place to come. Yeah. What has been your favorite place to go on the Prospect League so far? Um, I'm going to say probably Johnstown so far. That field was awesome. It's got the little mountain and the trees in yeah. the back. It's sweet there. A little history out there in Johnstown yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's that's a good answer. Good answer. Now, yeah. outside of the Prospect League, where's that dream goal for you? Where's your field of dreams of a place that you want to play, whether it's back to your home Little League field or an MLB stadium? You know, what's that field of dreams for you? Uh, I would say Wrigley, Wrigley Field. I, I've i grown up, I'm I actually from Clinton, Iowa, so I grew up, it's like two and a half hours from Chicago, so I grew up going to all the Cubs games and stuff, so yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the second answer, as people are watching this Prospect League podcast right now, they're getting double Wrigley's from our players of the week this go. week, so you know, I think that's a common answer for all of our Cubs fans here in the Prospect League, but yeah. you know, for you so far this season, it's been it's been great for you as well, but is there any, any shout-outs that you want to give or you know, things that you want to do do as you sit here on the prospect league podcast to be like a thank or you know just a shout out to somebody who's helped you with your success so far oh yeah i just my mom i mean she's always she's been the one she's out in the front yard playing catch with me when i was 10 so she she's coming to every game her and my nana and my girlfriend they're almost at every single game so just shout out to them for always Great. supporting me it's the family support that we like to hear as well, you know, of what you've been able to do this year. So, Max, I think it's been just a great year for you so far. You're hitting the cover off the baseball, so I want to wish you the best of luck the rest of the way. And uh, good luck tonight. Your chance to clinch, you know, yeah. you can cruise in the second half. Hope you have fun, but uh, an opportunity for you guys. So best of luck to the Lumber Kings and best of luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks again to Graham Collin and Max Holy for joining me today on the Prospect League Podcast. Before we wrap up, let's do what we always do and talk about three things you need to know heading into the Prospect League this week. The College World Series Finals conclude tonight as two Prospect League alumni will be in action as 2018 and 2019 Danville Dan, Gavin Dugas, and 2022 Danville Dan Paxton Kling are suiting up for LSU. Dugas is 4 for 9 so far this year, leading LSU in the first two games of the College World Series Finals. He's got a home run, two doubles, two RBIs, and a run scored so far. For Kling, he's one for three playing in both games, and he recorded a hit in last night's game. So that game three to decide if LSU or Florida is going to be a national champion is tonight. That's 6 p.m. Central on ESPN if you want to check that one out. More exciting news in the Prospect League, however. On Wednesday, the Prospect League will feature the fifth free game of the week here in 2023 on Prospect League TV as the Thrillville Thrillbillies will host the Cape Catfish at 645 Central on Wednesday night. The broadcast is currently scheduled to start at 6 p.m. And a reminder, you don't need any login or subscription. You can just click and watch the Prospect League free game of the week. And lots of exciting news coming out in the Prospect League this week, so make sure you check out our social media channels and head to prospectleague.com. As always, we will release a new set of Prospect League Players of the Week on Wednesday with the Week 4 Armcare.com Pitcher of the Week and Week 4 Baseball Notes Bulletproof Hitter of the Week 
being announced on Wednesday. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. And some other exciting and surprising news, maybe heading to the Prospect League this week. So check that out at prospectleague.com as always, and on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Prospect League. And of course, here on YouTube, we've always got some exciting stuff for you as well. But that concludes this week's episode of the Prospect League podcast. Thanks for joining me again. Exciting action coming in this week in the Prospect League. So if you can, make it down to a game or check out the action on Prospect League TV. But until next time, I'm Lucas Burris signing off on the Prospect League podcast.